Good afternoon. My name is Nikhil and I am a student of University of Florida and this is a presentation for the course Wireless Communication. The topic of this project is Random Network Coding versus Hybrid Automatic Repeat Request. Introduction. Cell phone usage has been on the rise ever since its inception 42 years ago on April 3rd, 1973. Initially, cell phones were used only for making and receiving phone calls. Gradually, sending and receiving short messages, video messages and also accessing the internet has been possible due to the advance in technology. There has been a lot of development in cellular standards to transmit MMS due to this growth. A recent study at the University of Edinburgh showed us that there has been an immense growth in mobile data traffic after the introduction of multimedia messaging services. As a result, several messaging standard protocols have been developed to transmit data efficiently. This is a graph of the survey, uh, it's a summary of the survey. Uh, the top left graph shows how traffic is being used. The graph on the bottom left shows us that 48% of the overall data usage is due to smartphones. The graph on the right hand top corner shows us that there has been an 18 f has been an growth of about 18 times in the last 5 years this growth is mainly due to video related services finally the graph on the bottom right shows us that 70% of the services of the mobile data is being used for video services in short the multimedia messages the purpose of this project is simple. Firstly, the implementation of the HARP protocol, the implementation of the RNC protocol, and finally, comparing the SINR of both the protocols. So now, let us have a brief overview of LTE. LTE stands for Long Term Evolution. It is a high speed wireless communication standard aimed at mobile phones and data terminals such as the PCs or the laptops. It was developed by third generation partnership project G3GPP. So LTE aims to increase the wireless data network speed and capacity. It uses a technique called OFMDA, which stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access on the downlink, and this provides us with high data rates. This is not the case when it comes to uplink. For uplink, it uses something called the Single Cal Carrier FTMA, abbre abbreviated as SC FTMA. The SC FTMA is similar to OFD or OFMDA. The only difference is that um, SC FTMA gives us an advantage of 2 to 6 dB peak to average ratio. One of the drawbacks of LTE is that in different countries, they operate with different frequencies. For example, in Asia, 1800 to 2600 MHz is the operating band, whereas in Australia and New Zealand, 1800 MHz is the operating band. Due to this, cell phones face certain issues and problems. The only way to overcome these problems is to have a phone which is capable of multiband. So this is the architecture of LTE with HARQ. It consists of four layers, the PDCP layer which, which stands for Packet Data Conversion Protocol layer, the RLC layer which is the Radio Link layer, the Medium Access Control layer and the Physical layer. In the PDCP layer, 
compression is taken place whereas ARQ is implemented in the RLC layer to perform these retransmission and also segmentation. Next comes the MAC layer. The MAC layer uh, has the implementation of the HARQ protocol where the HARQ protocol is in charge of retransmission, resource scheduling and to place data in transport blocks. Finally comes the physical layer. The physical layer is implements the forward error correction code. It performs modulation and also mapping to physical channels. <coughs> the HRQ protocol implemented in the MAC layer performs scheduling and retransmission as mentioned above. In the MAC sub layer, the HARQ retransmits transport blocks that are corrupted and hence most of the transmission errors are corrected. This prevents loss of packets, merging of packets leading to incorrect data and also all other transmission errors. So this diagram depicts the working of the HARQ protocol. Packets are transmitted from the higher, highest layer to the PDCP layer which in turn is passed to the lowest layer which is the physical layer. Before we get into the working of the HARQ protocol, we, we should consider two things. The SDU which stands for service data unit and the PDU which stands for protocol data unit. The service data unit is a packet a layer receives and the protocol data unit is the output packets sent from a layer. The PDCPs PDUs are received by the RLC layer. The RLC layer is one of the most important features of the HRQ protocol. RLC layer performs segmentation. If an STU is large or the radio data rate is very slow, the STU is split into many large packets to fit the frame. Also, the if if the PDUs are very small or the radio data rate is very fast, they, they are fused to form a single PDU. The RLC's PDUs are then received by the MAC layer. The MAC layer adds a header and also provi provides padding to fit the transport block size of the SDU. The, the MAC layer's PDUs is then received by the physical layer and the physical layer sends the, these frames to the destination. Now, our perf the performance of both these protocols is compared on the basis of SINR which stands for Signal to Interference plus Noise Ratio. It is a combination of various factors which is given in this particular formula where uh, PTX is the power of transmission, GTX and GRX are the transmitter gain and the receiver gain respectively, NRX is the noise on the receiver side, I is the intracell interference power, S is the shadowing loss, P, uh, PL is the path loss and PNL is the wall penetration loss. Consider a case where the user's equipment is confined within four walls. When a signal is transmitted to the final destination which is the UE, as it passes through the wall there is a certain amount of loss incurred. This is wall penetration loss. It is a factor that decides that degrades SINR. The brief now for the brief a brief idea on network coding. Two functions are performed by nodes in network coding where they are either stored and forwarded 
and also packets are mixed into output packets. They aim at reducing the amount of energy required for multicasting and also maximizes the network thr throughput. This slide shows the difference between traditional routing and network coding. The diagram shown here is called the butterfly diagram. In, in the case of traditional routing, the source node sends packets to forwarding nodes T and U which in turn forward the packets to node W. W forwards the received nodes to forwarding node X. X spends a certain amount of time to determine which packet goes to which destination. Hence, some amount of energy and time is wasted. Whereas, in the case of network coding, forwarding nodes T and U forward packets to the mixing node W, where the packets are mixed and sent as one packet to forwarding node W, uh, forwarding node X. X in turn forwards these packets to the destination nodes. Now it is the duty of the destination nodes Y and Z to determine which packet is needed and which packet is not. Now let's consider the case of random network coding. What is a real network? A real network is a network in which packets suffer from random delay and losses. The size of the messages or blocks in which the messages are sent are very small. Hence, energy is saved and throughput has been en enhanced. This slide shows us the working of the RNC network. This is how the packets are sent from the PDCP layer to the final physical layer. Initially, RNC is similar to the H HARQ scheme of things. It is in the RLC layer that one of the major differences arises. No segmentation is performed. That is, packets arrive and is sent to the MAC layer unchanged. In the MAC layer, there is an additional layer called the MAC sublayer, wherein these packets are encoded. They are randomly encoded so that so they have an identification number and the corruption is also less. When these packets are placed into blocks of fixed size, the number of blocks to be placed in a packet increase arithmetically. That is, first block has two packets, the next block has three packets, and so on. The physical layer has a transparent transport block of a fixed size. In the transport block, there is a fixed amount of packets that can be taken in. Suppose one transfer block takes in two packets from the MAC layer and has the option of getting another packet, then it takes the other packet from the MAC layer and fuses it together. Now, a question may arise as to what happens when it comes to the identification and what packets are mixed and what packets are corrupted. The encoding that is performed in the back max sub layer comes to rescue because it acts as the identification number. So once they are placed in the transport block, they are passed on to the destination and once each transport block is received by the destination, it sends an acknowledgement signal. Whereas in the HARQ scheme, there is an acknowledgement signal received for each packet. Therefore, the acknowledgements are reduced in the RNC score of scheming, which reduces the overhead. This slide explains what I have just explained, the working of the RNC protocol. Now for the advantages of the RNC protocol. RNC protocol reduces overhead due to reduction in the number of acknowledgements. It uses res less network resources. It does not segment the packets. It operates on the packets directly. That is the IP encapsulated video packets. And content awareness is exploited by the RNC layer. Content awareness is enabled by the additional cross layer interaction which is a feature for video encoding process. 
these are the results which were obtained. Uh, this is a plot of the SINI NR of HARQ and similarly this is the SINR plot of the RNC. It is plotted, uh, the SINR is plotted against the distance between the source and the destination. Here we have pitted against, we have pitted the HARQ as the SINR of HARQ and the SINR of RNC against each other and this shows us the number of decoded packets against the number of read transmission packets. Now I will show you the working of my code. First let us consider the SINR comparison which is here. It consists of four, four functions, the path loss, compute SINR, compute path loss and compute shadow loss. By running it we obtain the comparison graph. SINR of the RNC is shown in red and the SINR of HARQ is shown in blue. It can be seen that the HI SINR of RNC is considerably higher. The SINR is distributed between the source and the destination. It is less affected by noise. The number of retransmissions is reduced, time is reduced and minimal corruption of packets is obtained. Next we shall check run the code for RNC retransmissions. Here the decoded here this graph shows us a plot of the decoded packets versus the retransmission packets. It has a function called N NCL which is shown over here. The NCL is used for matrix division and multiplication to find which packet gets decoded according to which transmission bit. So by running the RNC retransmission code we obtain a graph. This graph is made for the wor worst case scenario of decoded packets versus retransmission packets. The graph implies that for every decoded packet there is a certain number of retransmission that has to occur because as one packet is sent to the destination you get an acknowledgement signal and a decision is made based on the acknowledgement signal whether to retransmit the packet or not. This is a list of references and this concludes my presentation. Thank you.